you know, when I usually start my research, I go into certain things with some assumptions. While I'm fully aware that in pro wrestling, things were inspired or taken by previous generations and wrestlers, like in the case of Flair and Buddy Rogers, or Dynamite Kid and Chris Benoit. I know that Hulk Hogan took a few pages from the superstar Billy Graham playbook. But holy cow, I didn't even realize that he copied almost the whole book. This usage of brother or sister, with Graham being a quite religious guy and even named his in-ring self after the famous evangelist, check. The Hollywood Hogan goatee, check. Referring to your arm size as pythons or guns, yeah, brother. Check. So if you watched a lot of earlier Billy Graham stuff, you can't unsee the many similarities in the Hogan persona and the promos anymore. And yeah, of course, Hogan took the whole gimmick to whole new heights. With McMahon in his corner, something the back then older heel Graham wasn't unfortunately able to do so. But it's fair to say that modern wrestling would not be the same without superstar Billy Graham. With his bodybuilding physique, he himself took out a few pages of the Muhammad Ali book in cutting a promo and was one of the biggest heels in the late 70s and early 80s, eventually ending a 1,237-day winning streak by Bruno Sammartino. People need to keep in mind that in the early days of wrestling, wrestlers did not look and talk like they do today. So Graham was somewhat of an innovator and pioneer with his chiseled physique and promos. Open about his steroid abuse, he started using different substances in the early 60s, unaware of the side effects, which eventually led to numerous health problems like liver issues later in his life. After his title run, which he eventually had to drop to the according to him much more plain and boring Bob Badland after nine and a half months, he stopped with pro wrestling but eventually returned after he ran out of money from staying in hotels, his divorce, and the costs of various substances. I guess this kind of lifestyle always has its price. Which eventually led Graham to return with an unsuccessfully karate-inspired gimmick. And since there are already so many documentaries about superstar Billy Graham, I want to take a rather different approach and go more into his training routine, strength and connection with Arnold Schwarzenegger during the golden era, not only in pro wrestling, but also bodybuilding. He became interested in bodybuilding at an early age, visiting his first gym at the age of 10. By the age of 11, he was making his own training weights from pipes and coffee cans filled with cement. As a teenager, Coleman was an avid reader of bodybuilding magazines and idolized Steve Reeves and John Grimmick. Coleman began to train intensively in 1968 at Gold's Gym in Santa Monica, after participating in various sports, such as boxing and football. There, he worked out with legends such as Dave Draper, Franco Colombo and Arnold Schwarzenegger. At this time, he was able to bench press 605 pounds. According to an interview, he met Arnold shortly after he arrived in the States and became close friends with him, even with Arnold being the godfather of his daughter, something Schwarzenegger took really seriously. At the peak of his wrestling career in 1977, Coleman now superstar Billy Graham, weigh around 275 pounds. From 78, he gained even more size, and in the 80s, at an impressive 325 pounds, he took part in the world's strongest man competition in New Jersey. Graham finished fifth in this contest, and was won by Bill Kassmeyer, a strong competitor, which eventually became a true legend in the sport, and which we covered in a different video. In a training video from 1987, we can see Graham preacher curling an easy bar with what looks like two 45 pound plates on each side and row push downs with the whole stack. According to other interviews with him that I have come across, his actual favorite arm exercises were heavy incline curls and overhead triceps extensions. Two exercises that I like to do use for myself and the wrestlers I train on a regular basis. Although the quality of the videos is a little poor, it looks like he was bench pressing 515 pounds. The workout is followed up by some heavy leg presses. And we cannot be certain if the plates are real or not, 
with his hip problems starting to get more serious around 1985, two years before this video was recorded. After his health started to cause him more and more trouble, he started to be a strong advocate against the use of steroids and even ended up suing the WWE. But his years of steroid use before entering the WWE resulted in the suit being unsuccessful. And although he's a divisive and monopolizing figure in the sport, he was definitely ahead of his time and indirectly paved the way for the boom of Hulkamania and modern wrestling and should be always regarded as one of the true trailblazers in the professional wrestling history.